The views and opinions expressed in the following program are not and do not represent the views and opinions of ZNBC. We are extremely, extremely heartbroken on attacks on the best family by a few private individuals, in particular some journalists and some opposition leaders that have teamed up to discredit the first family. Edwin Lifwekelo, Forum for Leadership Search Executive Director, speaking at a press briefing on Friday, April 29, 2011, flanked by Committee of Citizens Executive Director Gregory Chifire. It is all too clear now that the likes of former Defense Minister George Mpombo, who has now teamed up with the Patriotic Front PF-controlled Post newspaper, some elements of the Catholic clergy, and some other prominent citizens are up to dragging Rupia Banda and his family in the mud. It is public knowledge that Mpombo, a somewhat disgruntled, rather bitter man, made some very serious allegations against Rupia and his son James on movie TV's The Assignment Program regarding what he termed a multi-million dollar arms deal. Since then, there has been a barrage of attacks on the first family, much to the delight of all those that have been vehemently opposed to Rupia's administration. In making such a wild huge allegation against Rupia, Mpombo definitely wants to make the president and his family look bad in the eyes of the rest of the Zambian people. Mpombo claimed in the movie TV interview that he resigned his position as defense minister because of pressure from Rupia over the so-called arms deal. On Friday, April 29, 2011, Rupia was confronted on Mpombo's allegations by various reporters at Lusaka City Airport just before he boarded a plane en route to Solwezi for official business. Yes. Uh, your Excellency, we want to get uh, your reaction to Mr. Mpombo's statement that uh, he resigned because of pressure from you on the arms Yes, I have refused to answer that man because I think there is some insanity in him. Because the letter, the letter which he wrote to us resigning doesn't have that. And he should... Uh, he should prove to you, I'm not the one who said it, let him prove to you that it was something like that. And besides that, I think you know very well that we have not procured arms um, for 100 million. He would have all known, he would have seen it. There's no such a thing. So uh, I don't think he deserves uh, to be a But I hope the public will ask him to give a copy of the letter which he resigned and what did he say in his letter. Yes. Or to produce a letter where I told him to procure 100 million. Where would I, we get 100 million for, for arms? Our country is not at war. Zambia is certainly not at war, and Mpombo should stop turning people against Rupia and government as a whole. But what is pleasing is that there are people like Lifuekelo who will come to the defense of the president and his family. At the 29th April 2011 press briefing, Lifuekelo made a number of revelations. Investigations so far are leading to well-known journalists, some of them currently occupying opposition leaders' flats. We have gone to investigate. We know that some of these people that are putting uh, information on the internet, on the blog, most of those were aware. We have even gone to find out that some of them are even occupying the flats of the opposition leaders. And basically what they are doing is, of course, to please their masters. That pays them for whatever they are doing. So investigations are leading to certain individuals, but for purposes of assisting the police, since the police have taken over the investigations, we will not mention names 
for fear of jeopardizing the investigations that are currently being undertaken by the Zambia police. The cartel members of the press that it is doing this has found in President Rupia Banda a president who recognizes that is only accountable to the people of Zambia and not a few homosexuals meeting in a house and attempting to determine Zambia's destiny. The scheme, members of the press, to derail President Rupia Banda developmental agenda is merely to shift attention to his children. This is the reason we believe that Banda, President Banda, should deal precisely and squarely the crimes committed by these people that are now using the internet to discredit the family because we know this is the more reason they have risen against him, his family and the government. Their activities are designed, members of the press, to portray President Rupia Banda as a failure, as corrupt and as a political liability to Zambia when not. Will this country, ladies and gentlemen, allow a clique of few individuals to blackmail the president in this sad fashion? I think we say no to that. We have some names, like I've said, of this journalist who are using, of course, the internet. But like I've said, we we'll leave that investigation to the police and we are appealing to the Inspector General of Police, like many other investigations that have gone under the bridge, the Zambian Airways SAG, and many issues that the Zambian people are still demanding and waiting for answers to be provided by the Zambian police through the investigation that they've carried on. At the same press briefing, Gregory Chifire, Committee of Citizens Executive Director, brought out issues that have clearly exposed the Catholic Church, Fred Namakando members' PF-controlled post newspaper, and the Cobra. Well, I advise that you pay a lot of attention to Chifire's remarks so that you may know the kind of evil Zambia must be delivered from. Uh, recently, when President Rubia Banda announced uh, the dead right of unhousing units in the country, especially in <coughs> copper belt, some quarters uh, rose up to condemn this gesture. Among them was Bishop Alec Banda of the Dollar Diocese of the Catholic Church. And uh, most recently it was uh, Mr. Michael Sutter, President of the Patriotic Front, who even wrote a letter to the President, I don't know if it's a copy to the President, wrote to the Post newspaper and copy to the President, because it first was published in the Post newspaper and then uh, it was received by the intended recipient. Now we get to wonder what uh, Bishop or Alec Banda is representing and Mr. Sutter. We thought that the two are representing the people of Zambia. We thought the two were representing the poor in society. We thought the two uh, were representing the marginalized in society. And the home ownership policy is one of the policies that is meant to bridge the gap between the haves and the have not. The home ownership policy, we thought that was a policy that was meant to empower the poor so as to alleviate poverty in this country. But we are wondering as to why such a noble cause could be condemned by such people we hold as our servants, such people we hold as those that are fighting to better our living standards. It doesn't really, really surprise us because members of the press, members of this auditorium, a few weeks ago, Bishop Alec Banda was involved in a scandal at Zambia Revenue Authority where he, using the church, was aiding people to get vehicles, to buy furniture, to buy other things, goods, commodities, name them, from outside, and those people are not paying taxes. They are cheating that those things belonged to the church. As a result, the Zambia Revenue Authority discovered that there is a tax fraud, tax evasion here by the church. And what did the ZRA do? They slapped a penalty on the church in Nola of two billion kwacha. 
because of the reckless conduct, criminal conduct of Bishop Ali Tuba. In order to pay, because they were given up to the month end to pay the two billion kwacha, Bishop Banda didn't have the money. He goes back to the people, the poor people, who he condemned for receiving free houses, who he condemned for having their debts written off on houses, to ask them to pay 2,000 kwacha, and what he, call, he calls a two-pin campaign. And so far, the Ndola Diocese Church has raised 1.8 billion from poor people so that they pay Zedarai. This is very criminal and should not be encouraged, shame. especially by the church. It is a shame. shame. We ask those that have paid the 2,000 points to claim back from the so-called bishop. And those that have not paid, who have been paid to pay, not to pay because this is an illegal act. And why should people save uh, Bishop Banda's illegality? Because they were not there when he was committing this criminal offense. We don't know how much kickbacks he was <coughs> getting from the people that were not paying for their vehicles at the border. We don't know how much money is were being given to him for those that uh, the church cleared goods on his behalf. And Mr. Satana, he writes a letter when he himself is a beneficiary of this home ownership policy, which was started in 1995 when he was in government. Let him surrender the house that he was given. Because he's a rich man, he has more than 100 houses in Avondale. He has other houses in, in Chilenje, in Mezaf, and other places. Why can't he also donate some of them to the poor and return the ones he bought at 10,000 kwacha and give to the poor? This is hypocrisy of the highest order. And it shows that certain individuals do not have a heart for people. And it is difficult to find it strange that today they want to come and claim that they want to represent us when actually not. We are happy again that the three church mother bodies have joined together. They want to preach peace. They want to encourage that we should have peaceful elections next this year. We are very happy that program, peace program, should be commended by all. However, we want to ask the men of God, in the name of God, to tell us the source of that money that they want to use to preach peace and to ensure that we go towards the elections. I think members of the press ask them, the source of that money is a lot of money. We should tell the nation where that money is coming from. After the collapse of the UPND PF Pact, the PF has entered into another political pact with the Post newspaper with the sole agenda of bringing down government. The PF Post Pact government will be headed by Mr. Michael Santa for five years, if that is if they will. Who has promised the people of Western Province, the laws speaking people, vice presidents? And that's the more reason why Mrs. Inonge Winner, the aunt to Mr. Fred Namakando member, has been going to, not, to Western Province because they have been promised that they will be given the position of vice president. But members of the press, this position of vice president has already been given to Mr. Fred Mende. If they win, Mr. Fred Member has been promised to be vice president of this country. I wonder what sort of a country that would be. A homosexual. A homosexual country. And on top of that, they have agreed that Mr. Sata will only serve for five years, after which Mr. Membe should become president of the Republic of Zambia in 2016. We will see in which country that will be. These two part partners, have agreed in their roadmap to, among others, create a secular state with the help of some senior, senior bishops and priests in the Catholic Church and the advocate for a gay nation. Now, ask the Catholic Church, this is an open secret, if they are hiding it, if they are not preaching secular state, if they are, their stand is not to create a secular state. Ask them, if I'm telling lies, let them take me to court or take me anywhere. That is what they have been preaching, and that's what they have told Mr. Sata and the other people. 
and that is the message that they want to propagate and that's the more reason why they have put a lot of money in their organization called Caritas Zambia that will soon start going around because not long ago Caritas Zambia has been putting structures in all parishes in this country to preach the issue of secular state so that they create a platform for enhancing gay rights in this country. And I don't think we'll sit down and allow a situation where our men and men marry each other, our women and women marry each other. Ah, that is very strange. And the church for that matter, they are standing on this and they are serious about this business. And if you're a real Christian, you should pray against such maneuvers by the church because they mean business and they mean it and they will stop at nothing to achieve their, their objective. Not until you and I stand up to stop them. It is also public knowledge that the Bunjifum cabinet has always advocated for gay rights in this country. It is therefore not strange that their newfound friend, Mr. Michael Sack, who, who until recently, they term the leader and suitable for this country, seeing their soul in homosexuality, and are looking and are flocking together to demand for gay rights in Zambia. I'll give you one example. There are several examples I'll give. On the 14th July 1998, the Post newspaper carried the story. I am 25 gay with 33 six partners. This is a, a three-page, four-page exclusive interview. Very, very explicit. If you read it, you wouldn't want to read it again. And prior to this, they had advertised on the 13th, on the 12th, and on the 11th of July 1998, this story. <coughs> and the Post newspaper carried other stories on an organization they were calling themselves Lesbian, Gay and Transsexual uh, Association of Zambia, Legato, which was then headed by Mr. Zulu something. It was every day in the Post newspaper showing that they really, really have passion for this kind of thing. They have never condemned it. They have glorified homosexuality. And that is why some quarters have been saying and wouldn't be wrong to concur with them that they have a soft spot for gay rights and gays. Others have even gone to an extent of claiming that maybe some members of the post could have known some people that are engaged in this strange culture of homosexuality. Members of the press, on the 14th of this month, on the 14th of March, we had a press briefing here where we played the recording by Mr. Sata and we also distributed that recording where we hear among other things stated that uh, Zambia has laws that recognize homosexuality. Over two months have passed now and we have gone back to look at the provisions of the law regarding homosexuality. And one piece of legislation which we have found, it reads, and I quote, chapter 87, section 155 of the Penal Code, reads, any person who has carnal knowledge of any person against the order of nature or permits a male person Permits, permits a male person to have carnal knowledge of him or her against the order of nature is guilty of a felony, is liable to imprisonment for, for not less than 14 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sata encouraged people to be committing homosexuality. That is against the law because the law is expressed in stating that anybody who permits, not only those that commit, but even those that permit, and his utterances amount to, among others, encourage, incite, and permit people 
to commit homosexuality. Now we are wondering as to why the police have not summoned Mr. Sata to question him over this matter. Because there are certain people among our citizens who believe Mr. Sata so much and could have engaged themselves in this illegal act, this, this abominable act, which is against the law. Why is the police afraid of Mr. Sata? We want to see the Inspector General of Police issue a comprehensive statement or want to see the police arrest Mr. Sata for breaking the law, for committing a criminal offense. This is a very serious matter and Mr. Sata should be arrested immediately and arrested forthwith. Mr. Sata is an elderly person, a leader of a political party and a person aspiring to be president of Zambia who are sufficient advisors uttered those ways deliberately to mislead and corrupt people's morals. The laws of Zambia recognizes gayism. The laws of Zambia recognizes lesbians. The laws are already there. What we need is to implement the laws. Cobra knows that there are no such laws in Zambia and up to this day he has not found a way out of this web. The waffling around of the Pope Nuncio, Nicola Girasoli, on the issue of homosexuality on 19th April 2011 just rubs in the fact that the Catholic Church has no problems with it. Homosexuality is one thing and we really say these people need respect. You know, the practice, of course, this is uh, uh, the politician, they, they have their own job. But this is our stand, so we cannot confuse homosexuality with practicing homosexuality. People deserve respect. We cannot politicize a right. So this is the problem. So homosexual people, they need all the respect. So, yeah, we, that's also the Holy Father. It's one thing to say, I'm quoting, that uh, are human beings with their problems, their joys, and these human beings, they deserve respect even though they have this inclination and must be not discriminated against because of it. So this is very clear, this is the Pope, so it's not, you know, uh, so, and I'm very happy that, uh, you know, it, the Pope makes so clear. So homosexuality is one thing and we really say these people need respect. Uh, also, you know, in the Declaration of Human Rights, it's very clearly, you know, you cannot discriminate people because of sex. Cobra's stand on gays and lesbians has drawn very sharp reactions from some people, not just in urban areas of Zambia, but in the countryside as well. Basata wakona mwana abu musangwa, tukashime kwa mbai. Basata nukushala kukweba na venka venka basangwa, jina seleza. Ndawa kuswa kuri ya damwa eva, tukabona kwa mbai, lesa wakapanga mwana kasha abu musangwa, kwa mbai wakana kushara bana. Unoi basangwa venka venka, saa chichiri kisha wenga, wachi kushakuri musangwa, chakuna osha. Luko wenga, wanu kushakuri musangwa, wapu ya mwana. Ina wala kumita huya ni. Yes, this lady, somewhere in Zambia, demands to know how such people are going to conceive. Without putting words in her mouth, it is clear that the chorus everywhere in Zambia is that homosexuality will not be accepted. But you see, there are people in Zambia today who want such practices and want to see Zambia go up in flames and are involved in all sorts of schemes to see Rupia out of office. The schemes, like the unfortunate events of Mongu in Western Province and Mansa in Wapula Province, are only but the implementation stage of what was planned earlier, civil disobedience and civil disorder to bring down Rupia's administration. Those behind all this are even calling for the announcement of the election date, in effect demanding that elections are held as soon as possible. As things stand today, there surely is some evil union between the PF, Lamakando's post, some clergy in the Catholic Church, some former government officials, and some so-called disgruntled and bitter founder members of the ruling party. I will talk about them a little more in another edition, but for now, all I ask is for God to deliver us from evil.
views and opinions expressed in the program were not and did not represent the views and opinions of ZNBC, but those of the producers.